Welcome to the presentation of pelvic anatomy as seen by laparoscopy. The main aim of this presentation is to understand the anatomy and use it in surgical dissections. The pelvic anatomy begins at the level of the sacral promontory which divides the pelvis into the pelvis and the upper abdomen. At this level, the ureter crosses from the lateral to the medial side over the common iliac artery. As a result of which, the ureter now enters into the pelvis, remaining continuously medially to the structures. The bifurcation of the common iliac also is at the level of the sacral promontory. The internal iliac artery has two branches, one the anterior division and one the posterior division. The posterior division dips in, supplies all the muscles of the gluteal region. The anterior division goes for a very long length before it leaves its first branch, which is the uterine artery. The first branch of the internal iliac is the uterine artery, which traverses a long distance before it reaches the uterus, thereby enabling the surgeon to ligate the uterine artery as laterally as possible. The uterine vein goes below the ureter, thus the ureter lies in the fork between the artery and the vein. One has to understand this anatomy so that you can decide where the bleeding is taking place. The uterine vein becomes a single vein as it goes laterally and drains into the internal iliac vein. Thus, at the lateral limit, there is a single uterine vein as compared to the leash of veins which are very close to the uterus. The only branch which arises from the side of the anterior division is the obturator artery which accompanies the obturator nerve along its side and therefore one has to be careful while doing the nodal dissection in the obturator fossa. The external iliac artery and the vein are devoid of any branches till the first branch which is the inferior epigastric artery is given. This anatomical knowledge helps us to do the nodal dissection remaining parallel to the vessels. This is the entire vascular anatomy. There are four spaces of importance in the pelvis. The pouch of Douglas and the pararectal being the most important ones. The pouch of Douglas is a potential space which lies between the two uterus. This space is essential to understand because it is here that you encounter the denonvillous fascia which has two layers. To dissect in between the two layers of denonvillous fascia, one has to follow the dictum that the fat belongs to the rectum. If you stay above the fat, then the rectum automatically goes down. This is important in cases where there is an obliteration of the pouch of Douglas. The denonvillous fascia has two layers. As a result of which, it is a very strong fascia preventing any kind of cancer spread to the rectum. The pararectal space is a potential space which needs to be dissected and is not seen normally on opening. The dissection should start at the level of the sacral promontory by opening a peritoneum medial to the internal eye. At that level, one can see the ureter crossing from the lateral to the medial side. One should notice that as it traverses, the ureter carries its own mesentery, not taking any vascular supply from internal iliac or for that matter external iliac artery. The internal iliac artery can be seen as a lateral boundary of the pararectal space. One has to dissect parallelly to open the pararectal space. This is a potential space. The first branch of the internal iliac is the uterine artery. Thus, one can see the pararectal space is a ovascular plane and the only structure which crosses this plane transversely from the internal iliac artery is the uterine artery and the vein. The dissection once done parallel to the uterine artery will take you to the base of the pararectal space which is the levator canine muscle. It is important to do this dissection as the only structure in the pararectal space is the uterine artery and the vein which can be easily ligated laterally if there is a bleeding while performing the surgery close to the uterus. The retropubic space necessary to be opened for birth repair. This is a space bounded on the either side by the medial umbilical ligament and it continues with the paravasical space. 
Thus, the pararectine, the paravasical and the prevasical spaces are interconnected. This knowledge is important as the infection in one space can go to the other one. The uterine supports are an important aspect in surgical anatomy. What we see in a live anatomy is that they arise as a single fan shaped structure arising from the pelvic wall and going towards the uterus. There are three supports, the uterosacral, the mechanrods and the paracolpus. The importance lies when one wants to do a radical surgery as one has to understand that once we cut the uterosacral, the distal most destination is the levator and eye muscle. The mechanrods is the only ligament which carries the vascular structure while the uterosacral and paracolpus do not have any vascular elements. This dissection can be achieved by lifting the ureter and then taking the dissection from the uterosacral up to the levator and eye. As much as the fat belongs to the rectum, so does it belong to the bladder. If one wants to do the dissection of the bladder, one has to remain below the fat as fat can be displaced along with the bladder which can be clearly seen. This is especially important in a patient of caesarean section when one wants to dissect from the lateral side. The ureter carries its own mesentery as can be very clearly seen and does not take any segmental supply. As a result of which, the ureter can be completely dissected in the pelvis right up to the uterovesical junction. The only branch which supplies the ureter is a branch arising from the uterine artery which can be seen and which has to be dissected so that the ureter can be lateralized. At a point where the ureter enters into the bladder, there is a ureteric tunnel which is actually a misnomer and should be called as the cervicovasical ligaments as it carries two veins from the cervix and drains it into the bladder. As a result, the cervical tumors which are very close to this area very commonly involve the ureter at this region. To lateralize the ureter, it is essential to dissect this cervicovasical ligament which always carries two or three veins towards the bladder and these veins need to be clipped so that the ureter can be lateralized further. A few strands of endopelvic fascia then hold the ureter. There are three nerves of importance. The obturator nerve which lies in the bifurcation between the internal and the external iliac artery. The genitofemoral which lies on the psoas muscle. The hypogastric nerve which lies medial to the ureter. This is the nerve which needs to be preserved while doing a nerve sparing radical hysterectomy. This nerve supplies the bladder as it takes the supply from the parasympathetic at the level of S2, 3 and 4. Finally, this is the road map which shows you all the structures which are being dissected out. Thank you.